Welcome to another segment of Newfangler. I'm John Wilson here at Green Fuel Technologies in Cambridge, Massachusetts to find out more about their emissions to biofuels technology. It's hard to imagine our world without electric power, yet most power plants burn fossil fuels like coal, oil, or natural gas, creating millions of tons of carbon dioxide, or CO2, and other greenhouse gases that contribute to global warming. Green Fuel Technologies, however, looks at those CO2 emissions in a very different way, as a source of carbon, the building block of fuel. The company has developed a technology that draws CO2 right out of the smokestack and recycles it into clean, renewable biofuels. Green Fuel achieves this with the help of a tiny, single-celled plant called algae. Like all plants, algae absorb carbon dioxide under sunlight, a process called photosynthesis. Algae are the fastest growing plants on Earth. They grow even in the poorest of land and water conditions. And when fed large volumes of concentrated CO2 from the stack gases of a power plant, they multiply every few hours and can become a rich source of carbon fuel. Green Fuel's business is to recycle CO2 into profitable products like fuel oil, ethanol, uh, and feed products. We get the CO2 from uh, point sources like power plants or refineries, places where you get concentrated amounts of CO2, and we feed it to algae. Algae are the smallest plants known. Like trees and other plants, they metabolize or eat the CO2. Uh, just as we breathe in the oxygen, they're eating the CO2. And what we do is we grow algae very fast, and when we grow it, uh, we're able to harvest it as biomass, and then you're able to extract different things from that. Now, this is very important context of the world situation today. Uh, everyone knows about greenhouse gas buildup and that this is causing a gradual rise in temperature around the world, which is causing the levels of the oceans to increase and also the pH of the oceans to change, which is very harmful. Also, we have had over the past many years a decline in the new discoveries of oil. So we have a, a shortage of liquid fuels today. And this comes at a time when new countries are beginning to be developed and having even increased demands for oil. So the ability to reduce CO2 or use CO2 to make fuels, renewable fuels, that prevent us from having to pump fuels out of the ground is a really great benefit to the world. And here's how we do it. First, it all starts here. What you're seeing here is in early cultures where we actually grow small cultures of algae and we concentrate them into larger cultures and we inoculate them into very large bioreactor systems. Unlike corn or soybeans that can be harvested only once a year, algae multiply every day and can be harvested daily. With enough available carbon dioxide to feed on, Algae can yield thousands of gallons of biofuel per acre annually, as opposed to less than 100 gallons per acre for seed crops. Let me tell you why algae, you've no doubt heard a lot about ethanol from corn or oil from soybeans. Let me tell you why algae is a superior way to grow these kind of uh, products. Uh, Algae allows you to get approximately 8,000 gallons of biodiesel per acre, whereas soybean is a, is a, a fraction of that. Likewise, with corn, uh, you only get 50 to 60 gallons per acre per year, whereas with algae, you can get over 5,000 gallons per acre per year. Algae also doesn't compete with uh, cropland. So you don't have to go and decide whether you plant corn or not. And this is important because there's a big debate about should we make fuel or should we make food. With algae, we're tent we, we in our product are typically looking at the land around large industrial complexes like power plants or refineries. And most people don't really want to live next to these, these places, so that land is typically available. The other thing about algae that's good is that you get both of these products simultaneously. With corn, you're typically getting only ethanol. With uh, soybeans, you're typically only getting the uh, oil out of it as a fuel product. With algae, you can get both fuel products out of it in addition to other products. 
The other thing to note about algae, because the rapid growth, and that's really what makes it better than other crops, is it grows more rapidly than everything, is it also absorbs much more CO2 per acre than other kind of crops. Now what we do in the process is within the bioreactors, you'll see the algae in a fluid that looks like this. It's green water. Uh, you could actually drink it and taste it. It's not particularly uh, delicious to taste, but it's not bad. This is what it looks like when it's harvested and dried. It's uh, like a green rock. And you can burn it as a fuel. If this was burned, it's about 20 million BTUs per metric ton. Or you can make it into biodiesel. You could take this, go out and put it into a diesel vehicle, uh, mix no more than uh, 20%, and you could run the vehicle on it. Or you could make ethanol out of it. This, of course, is denatured, so it's a fuel ethanol and not a, a drinking ethanol. So there are many, many things that you can do with algae, uh, and the fact that it grows very rapidly makes it an exceptional crop to use for these kind of products.